Hi guys, Dorota Palicka, international nail artist and educator here and today we are gonna be playing with my nails. It's the first time ever I have got the halo instead of the nails so we have to do a nice backdrop as well. And I hope you really really enjoy watching this tutorial and learning how to do those cute spider web halo preview of them in here. Pretty simple and elegant set because I couldn't go for anything too spooky so let's start. I have my bare nails like and I actually cannot wait because we finally going to get a new set of the nails and they are gonna be longer so I'm just pushing back my cuticles I've got still tiny bit of the um, gel left from the old um, nail set I had it so we will remove that as well uh, now first of all we need to tidy up my cuticles they are really desperate um, so I'm just grabbing the cuticle bead which we've got uh, in the sets and I'm using the Melody Suzy portable e-file quite handy when it comes to um, to working like in a house obviously I'm right-handed and what we're doing is I'm using my left hand to do the set of the nails so things are really tough I'm just removing any cuticle from my nail plate And then we are gonna put it back to the reverse and do the other side. Very little pressure, like uh, especially when you're working with your left hand, which doesn't have a control of what it's doing actually. <laughs> Okay, let's switch that off. Remove the dust. And then we are gonna also trim this cuticle a little bit. So I'm just trimming a tiny bit. Again, doing so with the left hand is very hard task. <laughs> I don't want to overdo it. I will be just removing um, the biggest parts because later on when we file, I can, I can actually remove it a little bit more. I do slightly different cuticle work on my left hand and slightly different on my right hand just because of the control uh, of the tools. So trim that, get rid of that. They was actually really desperate to get that done. <laughs> and then my biggest cuticle. So this is the finger I'm using for um, holding my brush and my tools. And it always has like the biggest press on the nail fold. So I've got much more work to do it there. Very difficult task. And then tiny bit on this one. As you can see it, my fingers are full of cuts. Still recovering after all the works we have done it in the salon. With my left hand, I'm unable to cut it in a one piece, so I'm kind of like trying to trim whatever is possible. Maybe I will master it one day as well. <laughs> I believe it is just a matter of practice. <laughs> okay, I will clean my nail fold a little bit more on this finger here. because it always bothers me. So a tiny bit more. Okay. 
next step. So we have done the basic cuticle work. <laughs> now we need to scratch the natural nail plate and the file I'm using is 100 by 180 grit. So for natural nails, 180 grit. And here I've got still tiny bits of the previous gel. So I'm kind of filing it away first. File away a tiny bits and pieces of the previous gel. And I never remove it completely because I have removed my nails yesterday. And you know, I have washed like my hair, I have um, took a shower. Um, so like, uh, I didn't want the hair conditioner to get into, soaked in into my nails. So I'm always leaving a tiny bit of the product so I can just file it um, a little bit kind of more before putting a fresh set. So this is also a good tip for you. If you cannot do them straight away, do not remove it completely. Uh, keep like the small thin layer so you can um, scratch and prepare your nail plate just before you apply the extensions. This is actually probably gonna be a long video Okay, I'm happy with that. So remove the dust. And now we can uh, search for any shiny places on the nail plate. So you can see it, I've got quite a lot. You cannot leave any shiny places because that will affect on how the nails are gonna last on you. And obviously I want my nails to last a really long time. And filing those kind of motion, especially with your left hand is very helpful. Uh, because you don't miss any spots and you're also pushing the cuticles at the same time and the uh, file is catching the cuticles uh, in the corner too. So this is a really good way of preparing the natural nails. And believe guys or not, um, I have never ever had a Halloween set of the nails. Like um, I'm always... Um, going for like more autumn look rather than the Halloween. So this is the first set of the Halloween news and I do hope you really uh, like them. I'm gonna actually spoil it here as well and on my other hand we will do a completely different one. Okay, do the check. Now on the index finger, I've got extremely high hyponychium. Um, this always bothers me because when, when I'm actually doing the designs, it is visible from underneath um, and it doesn't look nice. So I'm just trying to file it a little bit more in there. But you cannot over file it. You kind of do it to the point where you don't feel any pain. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's trim this annoying cuticle on the side. And then clean the dust. Next step, a blue scrub. So that's a new dehydrator. And I'm actually just so low on it that I need to open it and just do it that way. nice and squeaky clean like you want really your nails to be nice and clean like any oils which might be on it needs to be removed okay next step an extra nail prep so this is a dehydrator as well and then let's apply the new forms so that's the sculpting forms i'm gonna use and gosh, we are going for a nice long news. So we need to trim our forms. Guess where the scissors were? <laughs> oh, you don't know. Uh, he always takes my scissors, always. Now, my um, pink is always pretty good, so I actually don't have to um, trim the form much. All I want to do it is the kind of size of the pinky and I can just go like this or I can just trim the entire uh, first row. Um, each nail is going to be different when it comes to the form fitting so there isn't universal way of like oh you have to cut the form that way. Um, things like don't work like that like this is a custom field fit so every form should be cut different 
uh, because each nail is slightly different. Unless you've got a client with the perfect nails, I sometimes have those clients too, uh, where you just slide the foreman and you don't have to do anything about it and they're just perfect. Now, this finger is my shortest nail bed and because I've got really deep um, nail folds, the only way to make this nail to fit in nice is to cut the entire row. So I'm always in this nail, I need to pull away the entire row. And on top of that, I need to also cut it on the sides a little bit so I can pinch it more. Okay, so we've got the ring finger. Now middle finger. <laughs> so each finger is completely different. Middle finger has a slight hyponychium uh, and because of that it's kind of extending um, a little bit more um, from my nail folds so I don't have to necessarily cut the entire thing but I need to cut it a small piece for a hyponychium. Also my middle finger always pinch really nice. I actually like the, the look of it once it's finished because uh, it's the, the widest finger uh, but it looks pretty good once it's done. So this is my middle finger. And then the treble one, so the index finger. Index finger has an extreme size hyponychium. And also like, a, because of it, it's like almost missing on the sides. So I need to cut out even more on the hyponychium and putting this form underneath is quite tricky. Um, because of the hyponychium, it, quite often doesn't fit in well. Okay, let's start putting those forms in and then clean my gel because we will be um, applying them in. So my pinky. So I'm always picking up where the middle is, place my form nice and straight. It's actually almost going up a little bit and what it does, actually I need to show you that guys because it's pretty important. This is going to be probably extremely long video. <laughs> so um, I like my nails to be very thin at the end and if my form is a little bit higher, you can see it. they've got a bulk of the product here, like a really large bulk. Um, and they are going to be very flush at the cuticle area and very thin at the end. Okay, you can see it that that's how my how I build my nails. So this way, um, if they snap, they would snap only at the free edge. They wouldn't snap uh, where the nail bed is. And also they look nice and thin. Now I have over pinched this place. So let me loosen it a little bit. Gosh, I can't remember actually when I was doing this set of the nails on me last time. It was so long ago. <laughs> then we've got the index finger, uh, the ring finger. So with this one, I'm cutting the form more straight, not into the rounded shape because I wanted it to pinch nice. I'm quite happy with that as well. Check the side view. I would have to watch it because this um, form usually goes a little bit higher. Okay, very happy with this one. Then the middle finger. Okay, I have to cut, trim this one a little bit more. And then place it there. Should do it one more time. And I say the index finger is tricky, looks like the middle one today doesn't want to behave. That's better. Check if it's nice and straight. And then the index finger. Mm. 
nice and straight. And this one I wanted to, to go as high as possible, but the hyponychium sometimes prevents me from doing so. And the reason for it is this finger, once it reaches a certain length, is kind of growing down. You can see the form bends in there because that's where the skin is. So I need to find a happy medium for that form. Okay, that's them all in. Next step. Okay, let's apply the uh, new prep again. The reason for it is we have uh, obviously touched the new plate during the form application. Wait a couple seconds for it to dry and then we are going to go for a universal air bond. Universal air bond is like a base gel and it's just coming to us back on stock. <laughs> uh, so I also do apologize guys for some of the products which have been out of stock but like um, Obviously with the move, I, it was quite tough and also I didn't want the products to arrive to the old salon. Uh, but we kind of slowly getting back to normal. Um, in the meantime, we have damaged the second sunbed as well. So yeah, the life has been brutal, I would say. But anyway, let's do those pretty nails. Um, so uh, I'm going to use the perfect rose. And you guys know this is my favorite color for my own nails. I love it, the look of it. Um, it's just my favorite one. I'm picking up a small scoop of the product and I wanted it to be only on the one side of my brush. Resting my hand and then remove the excess of it and apply a nice and thin layer through the entire nail. Okay, pick up another scoop and now I'm going to build up my free edge. Just a thin, thin one. So a little bit more at the place where the nails are joining together. And then let's go nice and long. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Wow. Okay, check this side. Check the other side. And go longer. <laughs> okay, let's freeze it. So we are gonna do um, about 15 seconds, 10 seconds, about 10 seconds uh, freeze. And in the meantime, when the hand is cooking, I'm just picking up another scoop for the ring finger. Okay. Again, remove those excess because if you've got too much product on your brush, you cannot get it neat around the cuticle area and the sides, especially with your left hand. Cool. Pick up another scoop. all the way to M and a half. This is actually exciting. Okay, and then the other side. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, but I want them to be nice because I'm missing nice nails. I'm always missing this corner as well, guys. Okay, freeze it. So another freeze, 10 seconds, which means the pinky have been cooked for 20 seconds. Okay, we can grab the first pinching clamp 
oh, I have no needle to check it. So normally I would tap it with my needle to check it. Obviously I cannot touch it, the gel with my fingers. That's good enough. Uh, you can almost hear it after the noise. So I can place the first pinching clamp to make my needle nice and narrow. And then apply the gel on the middle finger. Pick up the scoop. You can go even like almost through the middle first. And then just on the sides. Okay, again, time to freeze it. Fab, so the next finger is ready for the pinching. And that's the one which always pinches the hardest because I never like it. <laughs> Okay, and then index finger. So thin and then build up the nail. I pick it up maybe too much. So straight away with the product I've got, I'm going to the sides. And because I pick it too much, you can see it, I'm kind of working it backwards, trying to remove the excess from the sides. Perfect. Give it a freeze and then we can pinch the middle finger. Okay, so this is great. We can pinch our middle finger. We cannot pinch, pinch this one yet because it was only 10 seconds. But what I'm doing next is I'm checking if I've got enough product there. Enough product there, I do. I can pull this first form out, which is making the life so much easier. Pick up another small scoop of the product and apply it nice and thin layer through the entire nail. Ideally, you want to go to every corner, which you cannot see it. Cut the hair, which is really annoying. And pick up the scoop for the apex. So the apex, I wanted to start very close to the cuticle and to run through the middle of my nail. So just run it through the middle and basically leave it for it like to, to smooth out on its own. Perfect, that looks amazing. Freeze it. And after that freeze, we will be able to pinch the index finger. Okay, I can remove the pinching clamp from this finger and just place it on my index finger. Check. 
all good. And then build up the apex on the ring finger. Again, try to get the product on the places where we missed. So working with such a small amount of the product is best. And then pick up a large scoop for the apex, even bigger because it's a bigger needle. Release it from the brush and then just drag it through the middle of the needle. Sometimes you have to help it a little bit on the sides, well, so one side, other side, check it, this side is always terrible. And then let's cook it. Okay, and then we have to do the last two nails. So freeze it a little bit longer. Straight away, I can peel this form out and the life is so much easier. <laughs> nice and thin layer. Also the middle finger and the index finger is easier to apply the gel because of the position of it. Place the product there and also I can pull my nail folds a little bit lower so I can get everywhere. Then apex. Through the middle. And then cook it. Okay, and then the index finger. And pick up the scoop of the product for the apex. Release it from your brush. If you don't release it from your brush, things are quite, quite tough. And then just drag it through the middle. Once you've got it in the middle, wait for it almost to spread. Brilliant. Let's cook it. So now we have to do a final cure of 60 seconds on all of them. Okay, we need to shape them and file them now. Uh, so close your products like you don't want the dust to get in there. And then using the UV cleanser, we will remove the inhibition layer from our nails. I will actually show you maybe on the one, one nail how to shape it. Um, Sculptic, I wanted to show you because this was kind of a time saver the way I was placing and cooking them. So let's shape it. Um, <laughs> they are a bit misshaped, but uh, we, need to, we will make them nice. So I'm filing one side first, and then I'm going into other side. So one side, other side. We have to shorten them. File it from underneath. And that's already start looking better. Then blend everything around the cuticle area. Blend from the other side. And then we want to file it all over. So filing all over makes a really nice change to the overall shape of your nail. You can see that already there. And you can see it, I've got still lots of product which I could smooth out. OK, 
Okay, that is pretty, pretty good. Let's do the same with this one. So side walls first, then the other side. File it from underneath so they both equal. Shorten the free edge. I also like to do them like a little bit longer than is needed so I can play with the length and then smooth it out from all over a little bit because I can see it the free edge is far too thick. Okay, blend everything around the cuticle area and when I'm blending around the cuticle area guys what I'm doing is I'm also doing the entire side wall here so it looks nice and smooth and thinner. Like you can see it, it looks much thinner already. Still got bulk in here. See how it's improving. Then do the, the same on the other side. Okay, remove the dust and then shorten the snail and file all the bulk from the free edge. I can also straighten up that side first. So you can see it's so thick in there. Get rid of that. Okay, and keep going until you're happy with it. Okay, I'll show you on those two. They start looking much better. Let me check the lens. So I can see it, I have to take down a little bit more to match the other snails. So tiny bit more, tiny bit more. That starts looking good. Grab the white buffer and then give them a buff. Uh, buffer smooths out the things really nice and make the nails nice and even as well. So I'm always using a buffer quite a lot. And the white buffer is quite strong, so I'm starting with the white buffer. Now I still have got a bulk, oh, I actually got rid of it. <laughs> wanted to say I've got bulk on the one side of my index finger, but it's coming off nice. Remove the dust. And then use the gray buffer. So gray buffer is also great for like pushing back the cuticles and tidy up all those sides in there. Like I'm almost brushing away anything what can be there. So like brush it away. And it's a 100 by 180 grit as well. Check. Look how much nicer it is. Okay, check the same in here. Cuticle area, like brush away all those dust particles. And extremely well blend the area where the product starts around the cuticle. You don't want to be able to see it. So I've got still bulk of the product on that side. And tiny bit in there. You can see them from the side view as well. Okay, let's clean them and then do the cuticle. Okay, I'm just grabbing the cuticle bit and a ball shape and doing the cuticle now. So I didn't want to do more of the cuticle work uh, before all the filing. Now I can just file my nail fold a little bit more. 
I need to file the thumbnail as well because uh, the thumb finger from the cut. Other side. I've got a bit more in here just because it's my holding finger. Yeah, that's that's good enough. So I have to just clean the dust. After filing the cuticles, I like to use the um, gray buffer to kind of blend this area again and then they will be ready for a design. So I will have to do exactly the same on the other three nails. So sculpt this one, uh, file those ones, and then we can have fun creating my first ever Halloween uh, set of the nails. I actually cannot wait. <laughs> uh, and I hope guys, you cannot wait either. Yeah, they look, they look nice. Uh, so yeah, let me do that quickly on the rest of the nails. All ready for a part two. So I have uh, draw one spider uh, in here and a spider web. And now we are gonna do it on those nails too. Uh, white French gel, this is what will help us to achieve the look. And then the D-liner brush. Again, very big struggle because we are gonna use my left hand. On each nail, I want to do the spider web a little bit different. So I'm just rolling and preparing my brush to be like really, really thin. I don't want it to be um, too big. And then on this one, I'm just painting a line. Pick up another one, do another one at the angle. Pick up another scoop, very slowly. Also, I'm securing my hand on the desk because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to paint it with my left hand. Wow, I couldn't do a straight line with my right hand and <laughs> doing so with the left is even more challenging. Now we need to start painting the spider web. So even smaller amount of the product. That one is actually nice. So I have worked out the bend in my brush and going with another ones. Impossible. So I have just changed the angle of my hand. Okay, next one. Sorry. Impossible to paint with your left hand. <laughs> okay, I'll try that better. Yes. Okay, that's my life even more difficult. Yeah. See, that's an ugly one. Oh no. Okay. Your left hand, uh, your, when you're painting with your left hand, it has to be nice and comfy. But we are so I supported my hand and it was easier. One more, sorry, invisible one. Yay! Okay, we've got one spider web. And then, because I will make a mess of it, I'm gonna just flash cure it. So a couple seconds cure, because in case I do mistake, I can just wipe it um, off. Okay, prep my brush, and then let's paint another one opposite way. So.
straight. Pick up small amount of the product again. Another one. Another one. And just, no, yes, <laughs> one more. Okay, that one is an ugly one, so we have to wipe it. Without of removing the good ones. Better. And then let's do the spider web. So this ones are going opposite way. Sorry, trying to find the angle so you can see it and possibly I can see it and paint it as well. Okay, again, search the bend in my brush, so it's comfy. Okay, that will do. That will actually do. Now let's draw some spider. So I want my spider to come up from this place. And I want another spider to come up from that space. Freeze it so we don't damage our design because we was really struggling to paint that. <laughs> and then grab some pink gems. So I've got them here. Base gel to secure our gems. Just a small drop of it. And then we can create those spiders. So I'm using some old brush and I want the body of the spider to be here and the head to be there. Do not place too much base gel because um, if you do, it will be hard to paint the legs. Then the gem picker. And we are gonna do one which is slightly larger so let's do large one, no, small one in here. Which way to face it? Opposite way. So because I have placed a small amount of the base gel, my gems are going to be quite difficult to attach. But you don't want too big amount there. So this is a one spider and then the second one, let's shake it with your crystals so they are the right direction. And a large one, the head to be slightly smaller. And the baby spider. Okay, happy with that. Let's freeze it again. Just a couple seconds and then we're gonna paint the legs. So again, extremely small amount of the product. Even smaller than for the, the web. And then we are painting the legs. Line. And line.
if I had a tie knee legs. Other direction. Okay, two legs in here. I can't believe I'm doing such a, um, I mean, it's not maybe as complicated with your right hand, but I can't believe it, I'm doing it with my left hand. Okay, and then the bottom ones. And two more. Okay, happy with that one. Freeze it again so it doesn't get um, damaged. And then we are gonna grab some gold caviar beads. Some gold caviar beads. A drop of the base gel again. And you want to place two dots on each head of the spider. It's such a small detail, but I think it does make a big difference. Check it. And then freeze it. Okay, on the middle finger, we are gonna do the French design again. Oh, <laughs> So, you want to pick up your middle paint one side and then paint another side then start doing the lines. So start with the middle one first. And then do the ones on the sides. I will need to also clean my thumb um, finger, the cut as well, so I will show you that too. And now we are gonna paint it, the banded parts. Oh no! Okay. 
I don't know how, but I managed to fix this one. It's a bit on the fixed side, but that's okay. I'm not going to play anymore with it. This one is very ugly. So the solution for it is grab the watercolor brush, a drop of the UV cleanser, and just correct it a little bit. Just so it's a little bit neater. That's better. Okay, paint another one. Fix the French and then paint more. Definitely the design done with the right hand would look much neater. But I think I just wanted to show you guys that you can you can do it as well with your left hand is just a matter of practicing. Uh, I mean, my left hand does get better and better with every design I do. Okay, then a tiny wee line in the middle. Freeze it. Grab the base gel. And let's do the spider. I have maybe again a bigger one. Freeze it. Grab the D-liner brush. So the freezing just gives you enough time to actually pick up your paint, to be honest. And this one, because it's bigger, is going to be easier. And two other legs. Oh no. I'm getting there. See guys, practice. Add straight away the caviar beats. Caviar beats. Yes, thanks, cameraman. <laughs> this is actually really stressful set because I had never had like a proper Halloween news. Uh, I want them to look cool and be kind of mine style, you know. So it just goes with uh, everything what I wear. Now on another one, I will do again slightly different web and then. Basically, they will be ready for a top coat. So usually you see me, okay. So I'm trying to work out which way you usually see me and it's this way when I'm doing the design. So I want to place some web in here. Put spy, uh, caviar bits attached.
Oh no, that's an ugly one. Okay. I think I'm missing one more. That is better. And then the spider. No, I need one more. I either need one more or I need to pull along this one. It just doesn't sit right. Let's do it that way. See, I think it's like once you put, yes, once you place the design, you kind of know if it's good or not. I'm liking it much better now and also from the longest one, which is on there, I can drop my spider or maybe not from the longest ones. So let's do it here. There we are. So it's a kind of like working through your design and deciding where you want to place the things. Because you guys often ask me, like, how do I get the idea for something? So, like, I do kind of start doing it. And then once it is, it is there, I can see it if, if I like it or not. Tiny one. And I'm not afraid of the spiders. Like, that's why I decided to give myself, like, a wee... Spider set. When I used to be a little girl, I actually really, um, the boys was always so annoyed because they could scare any girl with the spiders or any bugs. Uh, but they didn't bother me. Okay, and then the bottom ones. They're not the most even legs, but... <laughs> Don't laugh. I have really struggled. You too. Sorry. Doing the designs with the left Hand is never easy. See? Same with the recording then. It's fine, you managed. Thank you. <laughs> We're getting there. Oh, see, I need to twist my hand. Tell me also, guys, how long you take to paint your left, uh, right hand with your left hand. I always take ages. Cool, and the last uh, last bit on uh, that is to grab the caviar beads 
two of them. Oh no, we didn't freeze the gem properly. Oh no. Okay, so I have to be very careful to don't move my spider too much. Give it a wig up. Okay, let's uh, cook it all and then we can apply the top coat. Okay, and then high shine, no wipe top gel. So I'm going around my crystals and I'm applying the top coat over the caviar beads. Check how the top coat is reflecting the light. I need to do that as well because um, just after we file the nails, I eat the breakfast. <laughs> uh, so if I wouldn't check it, they could be still a bit oily and the top coat wouldn't, uh, wouldn't last well. So remember guys, if you do a break in between your nails, like do uh, dehydrate them well, otherwise the top coat can go um, like almost separating because the nail plate wasn't dehydrated. Okay. And then this one. I'm actually liking them. They are um, elegant Halloween nails. Actually quite cute. So let's cook them and then I can show you the final results for them. Yeah, so let's clean this mess and then I can show you the final results of today's set. Uh, you have watched me struggling um, to create this Halloween set. I need to, honestly, I need to clean um, those fingers so, so badly and nutrition my cuticles and, and the skin around it, like to make uh, the things recover. But yeah, I like this set. Like, I think it looks nice. Nice and pretty. No, I need to show you that, guys, as well. Like, so basically, we can e file some parts of it, uh, and I'm gonna do um, with the beat because it will just annoy me. And then on my thumb, I will probably do the same like we did it on the ring finger, uh, just so it looks nice when uh, I do the next uh, recording for you. So I have put the e-file in there and now I'm just going to try to e-file a little bit of my wound. Um, it was pretty large one, cameraman actually has an even bigger one. Um, but we can make the prints, uh, things look prettier just by using the e-file. It has healed already, so... So I can do easily that. Removing my fingerprints. <laughs> okay, that's probably enough. Um, so let me clean it and nutrish it. Uh, I'm using actually for a change because normally I'm using the blue one, which is called Psyho. Uh, today for a change, I'm gonna use the uh, sweet cuticle oil just to nutrish that part and it already looks better. I'm not gonna be embarrassed for the next video uh, recording, but that's the set we have created today. And I hope guys you have really uh, enjoyed it, learning it. I have to do a nice thumbnail picture, sending you glittery hacks and bye for now.